Okay, so as per usual, I'm gonna demonstrate each of these riffs starting from C. Now, mostly these are minor scale sounding riffs, so we're gonna be in the key of C minor. I'm gonna line things up from C. And this is the best way to learn any new harmonic concept, is to line everything up. I recommend using C as your starting note. And once you've learnt it from C, then you can easily transpose it out into every other key. But in my experience, nothing tends to stick, for me at least, if I learn something from B and then something else from G, I suggest you learn every new harmonic thing, whether it's a scale, a chord progression, a riff, always learn it starting from C to begin with. So here is riff number one. So really this is just a pattern. You can apply this to various chords, but if we start on a C minor chord, well, you play the seventh, going up to the ninth, the third, and the fifth. And these are the four notes that I'm using to play this pattern. And it's just a rhythmical way of arpeggiating this chord voicing. And this is just a normal chord voicing that I would use for C minor seven or C minor nine, basically the same chord. Obviously, when I composed this, I'm sure I was just taking this chord voicing and experimenting playing it to a rhythm. So it's a syncopated rhythm. Syncopation means any type of rhythm that alternates between on beats and off beats. So funk music, for example, makes a feature of syncopated rhythms, and this rhythm is a syncopated rhythm. Now in the left hand, I'm just gonna keep things simple. I'm playing the root and the fifth, and I'm playing them to quarter notes. And in this case, it works really well just keeping the rhythm simple in the left hand because it allows my right hand to play off that and to do the interesting syncopated stuff in my right hand. It wouldn't really work if the left hand started doing syncopation as well. Really, you need someone to keep time. Usually that'll be a drummer or maybe a bass player. But if I'm playing this riff solo piano, then I'll keep the left hand simple and I'll just play the root and the fifth to quarter notes. This is just a pattern, so we can apply this to different chords, we can start changing the chords, we can also start changing the notes in this pattern to fit with the new chords, for example. Here, I went from C minor, and I just slid down a half step to a B major 7 chord, and I adjusted these notes to fit the new harmony, which will be something from the scale of B major. And actually I'm gonna play it as B Lydian, which I tend to do for major chords in jazz. As a sharp four. And here's how I voice it. I play seventh. Third, sharp four, and fifth. Change the chord again. Went from B major to E flat minor. And I can keep these melody notes the same because they fit with the same harmony as B major.
I wanted more of a pop music sound, I could stay more within the key of C minor and I could go around the chords that you find when you build from notes of C minor. So next up here is riff number two. Now this riff just uses five notes as the root, the flat second, fourth, fifth, and a minor seventh. Now there's several scales that this could be indicating. Obviously we don't know what the sixth is, what the third is, so there's various possibilities. But the most simple scale that this would outline is is C Phrygian scale. That is one of the modes, that is the mode that sounds quite eastern, because it has this flat second, and this riff is deliberately designed to sound exotic and eastern, and I like the sort of sinister sound that you get when you have a scale that has a flat second. So I'm playing it in two hands, and the way that works for me the best is to sort of keep the bottom note, the root, for my left hand, and then to fiddle about with all the other notes in my right hand. Now as with the previous riff, this is just a pattern. You can transpose this to apply to different chords. Maybe we could tweak it to fit maybe a minor 9 chord. Here we have a C minor 9. Something like that. Let's see if I can keep up with that. Okay, and now we come to riff number three. Now this is a riff I composed when I was about 17, when I was at high school, and I played it way too much. And basically people in the class ended up calling it the Jules riff. And it's a blues scale riff, so I'm gonna demonstrate this riff in C minor, and it's using notes from C minor blues scale, which are root, minor third, fourth, flat fifth, natural fifth, and minor seventh. So here is the riff.
So the best way to learn this riff is probably to break it up into sections. First of all, it starts on the root with the thumb. You're sort of grazing the blue notes, the flat fifth, and then holding down the root and the fifth with your thumb, and I'm using my fourth finger. Second part. And the last part. So I don't really expect you to learn this from this video, but the sheet music will help you to just learn this in slow motion. Now before I go into the variations, let me just look at the chords for a second. You can play any chords from the diatonic scale, so in the minor scale that we're in right now. C minor. You can play any chords from this scale, and it will sound good with this riff. So thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did I would really appreciate a thumbs up. If you know someone else who'd also enjoy this video I'd also appreciate if you could share it with them. If this is the first video of mine you've seen make sure you don't miss out on future videos by subscribing to my channel. And as I mentioned at the beginning there's a free download which is the sheet music. If you'd like to download the sheet music for free just click on the link below 